great. There you go. Perfect. So this is just a number of photos I've collected over the years that I was lucky enough to save from, you know, house cleanouts and so forth. This is a picture of the 1899 steam carriage, and uh, that was the first car that Ralph Otho Hood built, which was the prototype for his thinking at the time. And then this car, which was sort of the culmination of all the good things that had in an improvement here. My great-grandfather was Ralph Otho Hood. He was uh, from Danvers, Massachusetts. He was born in 1870. He went to college at Tufts University, graduated with honors. He was enthralled with electricity from light bulbs to meters to any, anything that passed electrical current. He built his first car in 1899. And it was his prototype. It was taking all these ideas that were in his head and putting it into this, this first steam car. Uh, and he proved that he could make the engine lighter, more powerful, he could raise steam quicker, and he could also actuate the valves using electricity. Ralph Hood developed a uh, valve and he called it a fluid valve that was electrically or magnetically activated, which eliminated the Stevenson link and a lot of valve train. Approximately 70% of uh, mechanical linkages have been removed with his new fluid valve design. These batteries represent the power supply for the fluid valve system. This is the switch to put the power back to the magnetic coils. These are the magnetic coils. They generate a magnetic field when you put a low amount of current to them, actually less than one amp at seven volts. Makes enough magnetism to hold the ferrous valve in the open position. And the timing or the sequence is controlled by a small distributor-like timing device down on the crankshaft. This is the uh, timing device for uh, hood card number one. These four posts control the coils on the four-cylinder engine. As the crankshaft rotates, every 90 degrees, it contacts a set of brushes for that, in, that particular cylinder to control the valves. Inside, we have the four brushes that are set up at 90 degree intervals, like north, south, east, and west. Our motor contains fewer moving parts than any other engine in use today. It is a four-cylinder, single-acting, magnetic poppet valve, electrically governed, requiring no cams, levers, links, or stuffing boxes. It is simplicity itself. This is the second car. The first car was the original prototype. 
A lot of modifications between the two vehicles and decades of development have been accomplished in that short period of time. One of the better developments between the first car and the second car is this control stock. He has put all your controls in one space. This is the throttle to increase and decrease the speed, just like your accelerator pedal on your car. This is for the uh, timing for the valves to change the timing to increase or decrease the advance of the timing. That would be for forward or reverse. Also on this vehicle, there's a lot of updated concepts. There's a rear differential and brake, his own suspension, pneumatic tires. The exhaust setup on this is coming out the bottom when you're underway. The steam vapor is condensed in a muffler and when it comes out the bottom, if the ambient air temperature is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, there will be no condensation exiting the vehicle. And he was concerned about that because there was a lot of draft horses and not many vehicles at, that, at this time. So if you had a big cloud of steam and a, and a lot of noise, it would, uh, it would uh, spook the uh, draft animals. When we received this vehicle, it was in parts. It was a uh, rolling chassis, uh, no engine, uh, no boiler, uh, no components in here. Um, so it's just a wooden, wooden shell empty. And uh, everything had a place to go. We just had to take the time to figure it out. Is and it, we're missing a lot of uh, important components. Yeah, it was a total puzzle, but mm -hmm. we put it together. About it. Yep, perfect. Yep, in. How are you in? My goal with the car is I think it's such an important piece of history and it's so old that I really didn't want to make it look new at all. I wanted to make sure to keep its, you know, patina. I've been working on steam-powered fire engines here at Firefly, which I love. So this is the first steam-powered automobile that I've worked on, which has been very interesting. One of the cool things that I've been learning about is about pistons and cylinders and all of these old steam engines that have such relevance in current cars today as well. And it's been a really cool thing to learn, especially with how they've changed and shifted in today's cars and how they continue to shift and change as we find other sources of energy. The first industrial revolution marked a major turning point in history and the engineering of steam power was a significant contributing factor. Thomas Newcomen and James Watt were two inventors who really advanced steam power during the 18th century. Newcomen invented and Watt improved on the use of steam to drive a piston capable of mechanical work. Many engineers around the world began experimenting in the design of self-propelled vehicles using steam as their source of power. The second industrial revolution, also known as the technological revolution, brought about an intense period of discovery in electrical science and engineering. Electricity turned from a scientific curiosity into an essential tool for modern life. This was Ralph Otho Hood's era. Much like today's search for alternative power, steam was not the only type of engine designed. Electricity was also a source of engine power, and in fact, they were the more predominant type of automobile used in cities. Electric automobiles were smaller and lighter, making them easier to start and drive. However, much like today's electric cars, they were limited in their range and speed. And then there was the invention of the internal combustion engine, which is fueled by petroleum gas. Carl Benz patented the first commercially available internal combustion engine automobile in 1886. And by the early 1900s, internal combustion engines became the winning source of power. 
Ralph Otho Hood's invention spanned this time of transition in automobile engineering and design. That is 7 Ash Street. That's in Danvers, Massachusetts. And that is uh, where everything happened. So that was a house. That was the barn or the workshop that everyone called, you know, his sacred spot. And uh, my, my, my dad, my uncle, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather all spent many, many hours in that garage. He came up with the first tuning fork clock. He came up with the first electrocardiogram. He had a method for aluminum wire form welding that he invented and has pa had patents for. The patent for a 16 cylind cylinder engine. <laughs> whoa, a little bit of power. Whoa. This is um, uh, auto automatic top raising for rain. It had a rain sensor for a convertible top. Get the heck out of here. In June 1947. This is interesting. This is the gas lock. Now look at the panel here. That was a, a panel that lit up and it said electric, gasoline, or motor, and it also indicated reverse. What? So it was an illuminated panel. That's crazy. Yeah. The Prius tells you that now. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the Otho. This is the last car he built around 1908. But again, I think you know, all these cars have the DNA of what came from that first one. So although these two cars were pioneering at the time, uh, the business, vent business venture to actually put them into production didn't work out too well. And so uh, he then said, well, internal combustion engine is going to be the new wave of the future. And why don't I take all the wonderful features in these cars and put them into an internal combustion engine? And so his next venture was a vehicle called the Gas Elec. And it was a gasoline auto electric vehicle. And the way the Gas Elec worked in principle was that you had a small electric motor and a larger gasoline motor and your electric motor operated a valve system similar to this so basically by pushing the pedal a little bit forward you'd be at electric power a little bit further we gauge the starter gasoline motor would come on you happily motor down the road easing your foot off the pedal and bringing the power down would get you to electric it also worked as an auxiliary engine so if you were climbing a hill the electric motor would also kick in and because of the torque of the electric motor it added a little extra boost to get up a steep hill. So if you think about what we have for vehicles nowadays and the Toyota Prius or the, the best uh, the best known uh, hybrid vehicle that was invented in 1904 by my great-grandfather. Uh, quite novel and uh, at the time ahead of its time. This hood steam car uh, it runs on steam out of this boiler and uh, we're not going to run the boiler today but we'll run it on compressed air and in lieu of the steam. It'll operate a little slower because it doesn't have the same characteristics of steam but it, it will run just the same. <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> Your great great grandfather. Yeah. yeah, the last foots to hear that noise a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You really hit it out of the park. <laughs> 